Peace, everyone. My name is Freedom Ali. Um, I'm 48 years old. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Um, here on the West Coast, I live in uh, the Phoenix area. Today is my first day out, literally just a couple of hours from the Tucson complex. I'm sure some of you guys watching this might be familiar with the prison system and know where I'm coming from, Whetstone and all of that. Oh, man, it feels good to be home today. I just got out. Some people might say it was relatively short, but I just finished a two-and-a-half-year bid. Thank God it's over. It was nothing but stress from day one. Um, I, Today I feel so good. I got good intentions to do good. I want to thank my man Daniel right here for running into me and knowing that he's doing something to give back to the community and to help other addicts like me. First of all, I just want to say rest in peace to my stepson, Devin. He just lost his life, um, but he's still here watching over us. And I want to tell his mother, Chanel, that I love her. Uh, real brief, I went to jail because I got high after being 30 days clean. One day I just decided, you know what, I want to go to the dispensary and get some weed. I got some weed, then I went and got me some whiskey. Then I decided to drive drunk and speed through a drive through like I was crazy. And the people called the police on me. And there was guns in the car. I'm lucky that I didn't get as much time as I did. But it changed my life because I lost a lot in these last 20 months since I've been down. You know, family members gone. I'm going to raise this a little higher. Just keep talking. But um, I managed to overcome a lot while I was in there. I went through a tremendous amount of stress watching other people uh, constantly get high. I don't know if you guys been in the prison system before or you guys are familiar with it, but the drug epidemic in there is 10 times as worse than maybe some of you might guys not, might even remember. I've I seen at least 20 to 30 people just recently fall out on whatever they've been doing. And this is like not the average just falling out off of marijuana. Whatever they're in there doing, man, is it, it's causing these guys to have seizures. And it's real bad. So I was lucky enough to see all that going on. So I managed to stay away from that. Plus, my, 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 my fiance was sending me honest money, and I didn't feel right spending her money on drugs. So today I got out with the determination that I'm going to keep staying sober. I figured if I can go through all of that nonsense of the stress with the CEOs, not getting along with other inmates, uh, not being there for my fiance and my family through the worst of times and, and, and be sober through that, I, I feel like I can stay clear headed out here too. I just walked past a Circle K just a minute ago, and I didn't even have the thought of the beer aisle. All right, my thing right now is um, energy drinks because I'm a workout fanatic. I like to work out Rockstar and Monster, and my son like Red Bull. So um, I just wanted this to be a little bit of an upliftment video for you guys, thanks to Daniel. Um, I'm not perfect. I know you guys are not perfect, but I just want you guys to know that when bad things happen, like I'm, I'm not going to put it in a politic perspective, but you can get back up no matter what the world throws at you. You trust in God. You don't give up on God and you believe in yourself. And every day you keep working towards making yourself a better person. I love each and every one of y'all and peace and blessings be upon you guys. Did you grow up in New York? Yeah, I did. You know, I spent uh, 18 years born and raised there. Then um, I got shipped out to Virginia, the D.C. area. Uh, I was up there for about 15 years until I met my fiance, and um, she totally changed my life. We, 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 we fell in love, and my regret is leaving her for these last two years. She's been through a lot. And um, I missed out on a lot of things to help uplift her. And um, I want to tell you, babe, you're never broken. 
you, you, you got all the strength in the world. And this is to each and every one of you guys who, who's dealing with anything that's devastating, that make you feel like you can't make it. You guys can. Just never give up on God, no matter what. Within these two years, what was the most important lesson you learned about yourself or in general? One of the most important lessons I, I learned, I knew that I can get out three months earlier if I took a transitional program. It's an um, opioid drug uh, substance abuse class. If you finish it, the state grants you a little bit of a uh, good time where you can uh, get released a little bit earlier. Most people take it for that reason. So did I. It, it was a... Uh, a 16 week program, but it was, it was mind changing because we actually worked on things and the, and the instructor held us accountable every week to make sure we did our homework. We, uh, we were learning group participation. And as the week started going on, it started putting me more into an NAAA sort of mind. And I said, why do I always have to go to the dispensary? Why do I always have to drink Hennessy and stuff like that? I'm tired of buying uh, Swiss Streets every five minutes and a bottle every day. I'm burnt out, and I don't want to go back home to do that. And I finished the class, but it gave me the motivation to say, if I come back out here, which I am now, and decide to take my first drink, which AA tell you, you're fine as long as you don't take that first drink. Don't smoke. I might give myself a chance. Now, mind you guys, I started really getting high in 1992, like my 11th grade year in high school. Uh, that's over 30 years ago. I've been doing this for over 30 years. And I done been to prison seven times. I said, maybe if I finally give this sobriety a chance, maybe I could stop getting in trouble and finally live my life without always having the effects of coming to prison and messing my life up and being suicidal. Um, I want you guys to give that a thought. Maybe it is the, you know, maybe it is the weed or maybe it could be the molly or whatever you guys like to do. Maybe it could be that effect that might be messing your life up. You know, I'm not perfect though. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that you said is, is uh, giving yourself a chance. And that was always the message in my videos is I never gave myself a chance. You know, I always took that first drink, that first smoke. And that just set me off the path I really wanted to go, you know? And, uh, yeah, you're speaking some facts, bro. I could feel it. You know, I, I felt like you, you learned a lesson. Do you feel there's rehabilitation in, in prison? It's definitely rehabilitation in prison. Um, 99% of the people got to want it. Um, it's people in there that's trying to get it. And then there's also people, you know, who's going to come back. Uh, I just recently, since December, I done recently seen at least 10 to 15 people come back within just seven months. Uh, parole violations and new charges. Wow, no. And lost the opportunity already. I'm praying that that's not my case this time. You know, I, I want to prove to myself and my probation officer that I'm going to meet uh, later on today that I'm not going to be nobody's statistic. You know, I'm grown. You know, I'm a grown man. You guys are grown men, grown women. You know, we can beat our addictions. You know, Daniel is a guy, just like plenty of other guys here in the community, that's offering help that can drive you to meetings if you can't do it on your own. You have to find the strength when you feel like you're down to say you can beat your problems. And even if you have to ask for help a thousand times, that's what it takes until you can walk on your own two feet and take your recovery serious. Facts, facts. Nothing wrong with reaching out, bro. Told you I'm here 24-7 for you. 
So a couple more questions. I don't want to keep you too long. What are you looking forward to the most right now? I'm getting, I'm looking forward to proving to my fiance, her mother, my family, my stepson watching over me right now and watching over his mother, my aunts, my uncles, that I finally beat prison. I, I can come out here and live my life clean. And talk is cheap, but I want to prove that wrong, too. What's your first meal going to be? Olive Garden. <laughs> yeah. The breadsticks, huh? Yeah, absolutely. The breadsticks, salad, anything, bro. Yeah. Man, you said so many gems, bro. Um, well, you have my card, bro. I don't want to keep you too long. You have my card. You know you can reach out. You can see your yes, video. Sir. Yes, sir. And um, I'll be, uh, I'm here 24-7 for you, bro. So I'm going to need it. Hopefully I'll get to see you again. Yeah. Do you feel if you take that first drink, that will put you in danger or that will make you want to do it again? That'd be Absolutely. I know myself tremendously. <laughs> E&J, Jamaican rum, Ooh, yeah, all that of that mine. stuff. Hennessy. Yeah, E&J and Coke. Yeah. That was my rule. It's, 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 it's going to be a crutch for me. The first moment I get some more stress is off to the liquor store. Yo. Very nice to meet you, Freedom. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your story. God bless you. Appreciate you.